Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Around New Britain with Mayor Stewart. This is a show that updates you on the issues facing the city of New Britain. A big thank you goes out to Nutmeg Television for the opportunity and assistance in providing the public with these shows. As you know by now, every episode will be posted on YouTube, and you can also go online to nutmegtv.org and view them there as well. I made a commitment to the residents of New Britain when I was elected in November of 2013 to make government more transparent and accessible to the people that I serve. This show is just another step in opening government to everybody in our community. My office remains open to all of you at all times, especially folks that are looking for help and solutions to problems that face them daily. I might not be able to solve everything for you, but I can certainly point you in the right direction to get you answers to the questions you have. My office does this by email, by phone, through Twitter, Facebook, the city website, or even once a month through my monthly open office hours. The monthly open office hours for the month of May are going to be held on Monday, May 18th at 6 p.m. here in my office at City Hall on the second floor in room 201. I will meet with everybody uh, during these open office hours. They're on a first come, first serve basis, so once you get here, you sign up, and I'll be meeting with everyone until the last person leaves. Periodically throughout the show, you can see my handles at the bottom of your screen on how to follow me or how to get in contact with my office. Now, let's get started with the first segment titled, What's Happening in City Hall? Our next council meetings are going to be held on Wednesday, May 13th, and then again on Wednesday, May 27th. Meetings are held in the council chambers here in City Hall, right behind me. They're on the second floor. Public participation always begins at 7 p.m. and lasts until the last person is signed up to speak. The meetings will usually start shortly after uh, public participation has ended. My monthly May open office hours, as I just said, will take place on Monday, May 18th at 6 o'clock here at City Hall as well. The Board of Education is going to have two meetings during the month of May. The first one on May 4th, yours truly's birthday, and then again on May 18th. They start at 6.30 p.m. in the Central Office Building, better known as the Gates Building, located on the corner uh, of Main Street and Columbus Boulevard. Main Street and West Main Street. The Commission on Persons with Disabilities is going to meet on May 5th at 5 p.m. in room 202. Community and Neighborhood Development will meet on May 14th at 6 p.m. in room 313. The Historic Preservation Commission will meet on May 18th at 6.30 in room 313. The New Britain Commission on Animal Welfare also meets on May 19th at 6 p.m. in room 305. I want to give you all a brief public works update uh, because we have begun work on phase three of our streetscape project, which involves renovations to Central Park and also sidewalk renovations to West Main Street and Main Street. So if you're driving through downtown, this is going to be a two-year project, so please bear with us. You're going to see us tearing up the sidewalks. What we're doing is we're recreating Central Park into almost a Central Plaza type square. It's going to be a, a more open area. We're going to put... Um, uh, different types of parking in on the Central Park area across from Sir Speedy and uh, Liberty Pizza. So you're going to see a lot of activity going on in the downtown, not just this summer, but all throughout next year as well. So please bear with us. In addition to that, you'll be seeing construction uh, ramping up on Broad Street as well. The phase three of of Broad Street is under construction as we speak. That's starting at Gold Street and going all the way up to Pulaski Park. So you'll be experiencing traffic delays on Broad Street as well. And I'm very happy to report that we will be digging up Allen Street starting towards uh, the end of May. Allen Street is in uh, dire need of some help. Um, as you all know, if you drive on that area of town, it's, uh, there's potholes all over the place. But in order to get it fixed, we have to dig the entire street up in order to pave the whole thing over again. So you'll be experiencing some delays on Allen Street as well, so please have some patience with us. So usually we always have a guest every show, but this show, I'm your guest. Uh, because we just are in the middle of the budget process, the theme of this show is going to be Budget 101. And as I'm sure many of you have heard by now, I have presented a budget proposal for the fiscal year of 2016 that does not raise taxes. So I want to take the next seven, eight minutes or so to walk you through the budget process and how the whole thing works. It can be extremely confusing. So in January, uh, what happens is every department head has to present their budget request to uh, myself and to the Board of Finance. The Board of Finance is made up of all volunteers from the community that I appoint as commissioners, which then take the next two months to meet with every department head, every division head, going through their budget line item by line item and asking them to justify the expenses that they have. 
The Board of Finance is chaired by uh, former council member Mary Morocco and vice chaired by Mark DeGrandis. So they've spent the last two months going through line by line, a very tedious process and very late nights. Um, they've spent here at City Hall going through to make sure that every dollar that we spend of taxpayer money is spent in a way that they see as sufficient. On March 19th, the Board of Finance uh, wrapped up and presented their budget to my office. Now, what I get to do during that next month, so I had until April 16th to go through their recommendations and then make my own on top of that. The Board of Finance has limitations to what they can and can't do. They can't make changes uh, in terms of renegotiated health care rates. They can't make any changes that may be... Um, anticipated costs in debt service payments, things like that. So they spent uh, a good part of two months over the things that they can control, pens, papers, uh, printers, computers, you name it. I have to give them a big shout out for the work that they did because it certainly isn't easy. I spent about a month after they finished their work going through and making changes on top of that, to which I presented my budget to the City Council on April 16th. Now, the City Council has until June 15th to adopt a final budget. The Council will meet uh, periodically throughout the next month and a half and go through each part of the City budget um, in their own respective committees discussing uh, changes that they may be able to, to make. It was very difficult. Um, the budget process is never easy. Let's just say that much. It's, it's certainly uh, quite the task. But you always want a positive result, and this year's positive result was no tax increases. After last year, we had to make some serious sacrifices. Last year, the city was looking at a projected deficit of almost $33 million. We had a shortage of cash. We had excessive levels of debt. We were just coming off of a bond rating downgrade, and we were increasing our expenditures while our revenues remained stagnant. So last year, we pledged stability and responsibility to the city, and we took some serious action and made some tough decisions. We reduced and rescinded tens of millions of dollars in authorized but unissued debt. We restructured over $40 million in pension obligation bonds. We passed a structurally balanced budget that reduced spending, and unfortunately, we still had to increase revenues, meaning raise our taxes to be able to account for the money that we weren't able to save with all those restructurings and rescissions of bonds. Now, it was very difficult to go through that process, and we had to make a, a lot of tough decisions, and some that weren't very popular with many people. But at the end of the day, we knew that we were going to get positive results. And our positive results, we finished fiscal year 14 in the black, we're set to finish fiscal year 15 in the black and actually increase the amount of money into our rainy day fund. We received an unprecedented three-notch bond rating upgrade, which means that when we go to sell our debt, we'll be able to get much better interest rates, paying less in the long run, and we actually saw growth in our grand list. Our current grand list is about $2.5 billion in assessments, and under the current mill rate at 49, that increase is going to show the city about $800,000 more in our operating budget, so in new revenues. Most importantly to note, this is the first grand list to exhibit positive growth since October of 2011, and only the fourth to show growth in all three categories that make up the grand list. We got there by stabilizing our tax base, and that's trending, and it's having a positive impact on economic development. But we're seeing this growth because of many investments that are being made in the city, whether it's Connecticut Fast Track, whether it's the sale of the Berkowitz building for $130,000 uh, for three parcels, whether it's the Farmington Avenue development that's happening with the senior living care facility, uh, Frisbee's Dairy Bar, uh, the gas station and the new restaurant that's going to be opening. Whether it's Costco, which is going to be opening in the fall, we're seeing tons of growth and lots of small businesses that are opening up too. And it's truly because people want to invest in cities that are investing in themselves. The city of New Britain is making large investments in our own infrastructure. Whether it's sidewalk improvements, we're going through our master plan with the Main Street overpass, the Beehive Bridge, Phase three of construction of our complete streets plan is now underway. We're doing massive improvements at our parks, whether it's at Veterans Memorial Field with new field turf, Chesley Park that's getting field turf as well. People are seeing the positive growth that the city is exuding and they want to be a part of it. New businesses are coming in and we're going to be reaping the benefits of that for many years to come as long as we keep on that forward trend. 
but we're still not out of the water yet. We had a serious problem uh, over the last few years that we are still trying to fix. So the challenges that we had with this year's budget were always the cost of city services going up. That's driven by contracts and unfunded state mandates. We have increases in energy and utilities. We've got the cost of maintaining an aging infrastructure. Our police station may be new, but the rest of our buildings aren't so new, and we have to pay to keep making those improvements. We've got rising health insurance costs. They've increased by nearly 20% over the past five years. Rising pension costs. We've got cost of contract settlements, and we also have to take into account immediate um, uh, debt of four million dollars alone in FY16. That's because we're seeing a debt service payment spike of uh, just over four million dollars, meaning we've got to start paying for all those projects that we, we bond for. Also last year there was the four million dollar question as it relates to the Board of Education. Uh, so we're starting at that four million dollar hole as well to try to make that up from last year. So once you bring all of those things together, we go through the budget. Um, the budget that you will see that I've proposed to the City Council totals $224,757,851, and you can quote me on that. Uh, but that is a small increase from fiscal year of 2015, and that's because of the increase in the grand list and also a projection to increase our tax collection rate, too. We're seeing an increase in the way that we are collecting taxes because of the scanners on the backs of the police vehicles that we have, and also because of the ability to pay online, making it easier for you to go online and pay your property tax, your water, and your sewer bills all in one instead of having to do them three separate times at all different times. We're moving towards getting all of those functions online. This budget also does a lot more than just keep the line stable. Um, we're bringing City Hall into the 21st century, so we're um, putting in funds to have a new city website created with also new online capabilities for citizens and employees. I've talked a lot about the public works um, systems where you'll be able to request uh, public works vehicles online in a timely manner. You'll be able to see where our snowplow trucks are in the winter time. We're very excited to be bringing that, but it all comes at a cost. But that's our job. We need to be more uh, customer service related, and that's what these systems will do. We're increasing our pension uh, contributions. We're cleaning up our city. We're setting up side funds for a specific part-time blight enforcement officer and we're being more fiscally prudent by increasing the money in our rainy day fund just in case we have a winter like we had last year. We can afford those things because there's key areas of savings so we've renegotiated our rates with Anthem for substantial health care uh, savings. We have a new workers comp system that we purchased last year which is allowing us serious uh, savings through reduced rates and enhanced prevention measures. We had over 2,000 open cases and we had to carry funds for the liability on all those open cases. We don't have to do that anymore because of this company that we hired that came in and wrote them all off our books. We are beginning the process of moving city employees to high deductible health plans with the option, of course, of buying up to the existing uh, preferred plan that they have, uh, but that's going to save us uh, a lot of money as well. We've swept out all of our non-essential vacancies, and we've also had great success in contract negotiations with our labor partners. In addition to those savings, we're seeing increased revenues. We're realigning our long-term debt obligations to meet the needs of our citizens. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is is basically refinancing our mortgage, if you will, to payments that we can afford so we're not struggling to make those payments every month. We've increased the tax collection rate due to past trends, but also through improved technology, which I spoke of earlier, and we're enhancing enforcement of existing ordinances, whether it's parking tickets, blight fines, um, building and health fines, you name it. We've also increased those fees so we're collecting just a little bit more to help put us over the top. We are also making sure to invest in education. Yes, the uh, bottom line for education is flat funded again this year at 123.2 million. You will see a decrease in that number. It was about 124 and change last year. 
The reason that there is a decrease is because of the anticipated closure of uh, St. John Paul uh, School. We don't have to pay for all those parochial school costs anymore, so we were able to reduce the school uh, line item by that much. But there is no change in the amount of money that is going towards the consolidated school district of New Britain. That still stands at $123.2 I think it's important for me to make the... Um, make note to all of you watching that just because we flat funded their operating budget doesn't mean that we're not investing in education in other ways. We have $9.9 .9 million in upgrades going to school technology, textbooks, and the New Britain High School Auditorium. Every classroom, every student will have access to a smart board in their classroom. We're spending $30 million for the complete renovation of Gaffney School, $10 million on De Loretto, and we're also doing solar projects on Smalley, Smith, De Loretto, and Holmes, which also comes with new curriculum teaching our students about solarization and the benefits that comes with it. So although we're not investing um, additional funds in the general fund for education, we certainly are putting money elsewhere. All that being said, it's been quite the process uh, for the last few months. I know we're going to be running late on time here, but our mill rate is staying stable at 49 mills. There will not be a tax increase next year. We're going to make sure that we hold the line on spending because it's a benefit to all of us. Uh, in the community as well. I want people to be able to afford to live here, but we also have to live within our means too. And that means that every other year, we're going to have to take a good hard look at what we can afford and what we can't. Um, you know, we can't cut city services to the point where we're eliminating, uh, you know, public safety, where we're closing schools. We can't do that. We're going to do all these things within reason to what our city can afford. There's important things to remember. Any budget is a living document. This can all change between now and July 1st. Budgets are meant to be good faith estimates of what, uh, what we're projecting for the following year. And we are going to be investing in a stronger tomorrow for New Britain. And we're investing in a stronger tomorrow by having a structurally balanced budget. We're keeping our expenditures in line with our revenues. We're making us a more attractive location for people to invest in. I want to thank you all for your time and listening and caring about what's going on with the city budget. I promise you that we'll be working hard to invest in a stronger New Britain. Now, before we close, there are a few events, and by a few, I mean a lot of events going on in the city during the month of May that I'd like to share with all of you. On May 2nd, Take Back the Streets, an anti-violence rally for our youth is going to be held at Walnut Hill Park from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'd like to thank our partners in putting that together, OIC of New Britain, Pathway Senderos, and the New Britain Police Department. Also on May 2nd, it's opening day for our community gardens. To reserve a plot at either location on either Chapman or Lawler Streets, you can contact our community services department at 826 3366. The cost of renting a plot is only $10 for the season and spaces are filling up very quickly, so reserve your plot today. On Mother's Day weekend, Sunday, April, uh, May 9th, the race in the park is happening at Walnut Hill Park. All of you are very familiar with this event. It's been here for the last 11 years. Rain or shine, the event is happening. We're hoping, hoping for good weather. It rains last year, so we'll pray for sunshine for this year for a great event. All money raised goes to support breast cancer research in the state of Connecticut. My family's been participating in this event for many years. I hope all of you will come out as well. From 8 to 11 uh, on Monday, May 11th, CT Rides will be kicking off a week of activities to promote CT Fast Track. Local businesses will be passing out information encouraging use of public transportation. May is also National Bike Month, and there are several events planned in the city. On May 8th, the Bike New Britain group will hold an opening reception at 5 p.m. at the Downtown District Visitor Center. That's at 66 West Main Street. Friday, May 15th is also National Bike to Work Day. If you're riding in, make sure you stop by Central Park beginning at 8 a.m. We'll have some coffee and treats for everybody that's riding their bike to work. On May 15th, the Museum of American Art will host their monthly After Dark event that runs from 8 to 11 p.m. It's a lot of fun. Tickets are $20 for members and $25 for non-members. The OIC Center of New Britain is having their annual awards gala at St. George Greek Hall at 301 West Main Street starting at 5.30 p.m. That's on May 22nd. On May 21st, there's going to be an opening reception also at the New Britain Museum of American Art, featuring an exhibit with over 225 New Britain students and all the artwork that they've been working on throughout their school year. The event starts at 6.30 p.m. I encourage all of you to come out and attend. The grand opening of Go Ape 
the grand opening of Go Ape at AW Stanley Park is on Saturday, May 23rd. So if you want a good laugh, you can come out and see me hanging on a zip line, screaming for my life at AW Stanley Park. I hope you all join us for that one. But most importantly, uh, the Memorial Day Parade takes place on Saturday, May 30th. The parade kicks off at 6 p.m. from the top of Broad Street and goes all the way down Main Street, finishing at Franklin Square. In addition to the Memorial Day Parade, the City of New Britain Veterans Commission will be remembering our veterans by placing wreaths during several ceremonies at monuments throughout the city on Memorial Day. The wreath laying at Central Park takes place at 11 a.m. I encourage you all to join me there as well. So that's about all the time that we have for today. I know there's a lot going on in the month of May. Hopefully we'll see you at one of the many events that we have going on. I want to thank you all for watching and direct you to the bottom of our screen for our website, office number, and other ways to get more information regarding the show or just to talk about the issues that affect you. I hope to see you all back next month for another edition of Around New Britain with Mayor Stewart.